Welcome back to MVM. Today I have a brand new upcoming game on the table. This is called Horizon First Contact. And yes, this is a game about the first contact with alien species. The bad news is that alien species is monstrous and trying to destroy us. Now, this game is a cooperative, almost tower defense game with a sci-fi twist. It takes place thousands of years in the future. Humanity has extended out to the stars to this one sector in particular. Now, for years, humanity has kind of squabbled over power struggles and political disagreements and things like that. But upon first contact with this alien species known as homunculus, they kind of have to put aside their differences and work together to protect their base, their home in which they live. And that's represented by this map that's out in front of me. Now, before we go any further, it's worth noting that this is a prototype by every measure. It is not final components. I don't even have all of the final components with me. There will be miniatures in the game, including a miniature to represent the base out on the board. And all of these giant standees that I have will be miniatures instead. You see I have the colored clips on here. These will be bases that can slot onto the bottom of your uh, characters and homunculus uh, miniatures as well. But this is the base that you're trying to protect in the center. And you will see already kind of that tower defense vibe as you see these rings around the outside where these homunculus creatures will come in and try to attack the base. Now, the base will be taking damage over time, and of course, your main goal is to protect the base. That's basically it. You have to protect the base at all costs through escalating waves of these homunculus miniatures. This is uh, timed over here by the, a round tracker that's going to go over the course of 10 rounds. If you survive to the end of 10 rounds, you survive the onslaught, you live to fight another day, you get your rescue, everybody gets to live. However, if you fail before then, the base is destroyed, everyone's out of a home, that's bad news for you. As you go through the turns, you're going to escalate, and that's controlled by this deck of homunculus cards. These will control the homunculus that come out. You're going to have yellow, then orange, which is a little more difficult, and then red, which is the hardest. And then mixed in with the reds, you're going to have one or two alpha homunculus characters. These are like boss monsters to fight, and you can choose your own difficulty, whether you want to have one or two of these mixed in. But these homunculus cards are going to be coming out every round. You're going to slot them up here on this homunculus board, and you're going to add those homunculus characters out onto the board as well. Now to do so, you'll slot a matching base onto that particular miniature, and you will roll the die to determine which sector that homunculus comes into. So if I have a two here, I'll place that homunculus in sector two. Now you are trying to protect the center like I talked about, but you'll see other things on the map as well. You'll see some pre-printed buildings like the ruins, the refinery, and the wreckage. Those are buildings that you can interact with that are pre-printed on the board. In addition, you're gonna have three other upgraded buildings and you'll see these tokens out on the board that represent those buildings. The actual buildings are placed over here and these are going to give you specific abilities. There are several different buildings you can use every game, but you're only going to use three of them. So the game is going to play a little differently every time you play. Now, these buildings can be leveled up over time to give you new abilities. They can also take damage throughout the game. That damage is going to cause those buildings to potentially be destroyed, in which case you'll have to then rebuild them. So it's not just about protecting your base. It's also about trying to protect these buildings along the outside of the board, because if these buildings get destroyed, you're going to lose some precious access to resources that you're going to need over the course of the game. Now, these homunculus creatures are not the only threat that you're having to mitigate in the game. Every round, you're going to have mission cards, and these mission cards will give you a task that you need to complete while this mission card is active. You can have three mission cards active at a time. Whenever a mission card fails, meaning it comes off, you have more than three, that fourth one is actually discarded into damage. You flip that mission card over, and every single one of these mission cards has some kind of detrimental ability that's going to affect the game. This also happens when the base takes damage from the, the homunculus uh, miniatures. You'll reveal another one of these cards from the deck, and you'll basically be stacking out these damage tokens, or damage cards, over the course of the game until the base is ultimately destroyed. Each one makes things a little harder for you, but you can repair the base, you can repair the buildings. All of that is stuff that you're going to have to do over the course of the game. 
Now you, as a player, are going to take on the role of one of the factions trying to defend the base. Each one of the factions is going to get a unique player board with unique decks of cards and unique leaders. Every player is going to have four possible crew members that you can choose from. Based on the player count, you're going to use a different amount. For this game, I get to have two active crew, which you'll see that I've placed out here on the board, and you have one that's kind of in your reserve. In case something happens to one of your crew, you can replace it with your reserve. So I'll have a total of three throughout the game. You're also gonna choose one leader. These leaders are also asymmetric based on which faction you're playing. You're gonna choose one for the entire game, place it in your leader box, and then you're gonna get access to a once per turn ability that your leader provides. In addition, each one of these crew has a special unique ability as well. In addition to all of that, you're going to have over here the base armory, which is a stack of equipment. Everyone gets to draw to and choose one at the start of the game to slot down in your equipment. And then on top of that, you're going to have experience trackers and unique dice for every character. So you'll start to see already that based on the characters that are in play, based on the buildings that are in play, based on the equipment, and based on the leaders that you choose, you're going to have a completely unique game with a bunch of different abilities to play every time you play the game. Now, a lot of what you're doing on your turn is just taking actions with your heroes, and those are the characters that are out on the board. These characters are able to move, they're able to interact with buildings, they're able to fight off the homunculus and try to deal damage to them, to destroy them ultimately uh, by you know giving yourself a little bit of a reprieve because these are gonna come out every round. If you just ignore the homunculus, they're going to overwhelm you. The same thing is true for the missions. You can send your heroes out to the mission location. It says on every card what you need to do in order to complete that mission. A lot of those are going to require you to turn in some resources. You'll have resources like minerals, which can be used to upgrade, but they can also be used to pay for cost of things like buying new equipment and, and repairing structures. So you'll need to get minerals a lot, which means you're gonna have to go out to the refinery to get minerals. You're gonna have to go out to the ruins to get these gear tokens. So you're going to have to be moving around this board a lot. So on your turn, you get actions to spend and you're gonna be taking those actions to move around this board. And you're going to be rolling dice to trigger a lot of abilities. You can roll dice for the resources you're getting. You can roll dice to try to complete these missions. Every character has their own unique dice, which you're seeing there on the screen right now. It's going to have some different faces and those different faces are gonna trigger different abilities. So this game does have some sandboxy elements to it in addition to that tower defense element because you are gonna to need to be spreading out over the board. You are gonna to need to be plotting and strategizing with the people at the table because your actions are very limited and very tight in this game. You're going to have to look out at the board and figure out a plan from the beginning. Oh, I noticed that this game, we have the barracks. That's gonna get us some equipment. Let's try to level up that barracks early so we can start getting more equipment because more equipment is gonna trigger our abilities. Oh, but this character has an ability that lets you get more equipment. You'll start to see the synergies coming out. It's important to recognize those early so you can play to the strengths of your faction. Also, when you're choosing your characters, you're gonna to get to choose together as a team to kind of build your crew. So it's a really good idea to have a good mix of characters that can support, characters that can fight, characters that can do utility actions out on the board. And it's important to denote uh, exactly kind of who's handling the missions, who's handling fighting the homunculus. There's just a lot going on in this game that you have to prepare for and you have to plan for. I will say this game is not easy. I mean, this, this is difficult game. However, they do give you some options to scale back the difficulty. Like I mentioned, you can choose only one alpha instead of two. You can also gain some tokens that will allow you to call in like reinforcements, reinforcement tokens to gain benefits over the course of the game. And you can choose a different number of those uh, in order to make the game a little easier for you. Now the actual turn to turn structure of the game is pretty simple. Every round you're revealing a new mission and you're revealing a new homunculus. The missions are gonna have some kind of effect and the homunculuses might have some kind of event that triggers as well. This one locks off specific locations so you can't use it. And this mission, for example, Risky Documentary is assigned to a specific character and they have, they have to complete that mission, no one else can. So you're gonna get those every round and then the players will get to take their turns. Any player can start and then you're gonna move clockwise after that. So every round, you can choose a new start player, whoever you think is going to take the best action, albeit with the caveat that you can never go uh, first two turns in a row. But you can just kind of decide the order in which you wanna take your actions in order to get the best possible turn. 
And their actions, again, are pretty easy. There's really only four actions you can take. You can be moving across the board, you can be fighting the homunculus, you can be interacting with one of these buildings, or you can be doing a mission. Now, interacting with the buildings out here in the black zone allows you to interact with that specific building, but anywhere in this red zone here is going to allow you to interact with the base specifically, which is where you can actually improve the base. You can level up the base's health so that you get more health. You can level up the buildings in order to get a better abilities in the buildings, and you can buy equipment from there. So you get to decide uh, what you wanna do. You get three actions for every one of your characters. So with, with two characters out, six actions total. Again, you have to be very specific when you're taking these actions. I can't stress that enough. You have to plan. And on the 10th round, you're actually not gonna get an action phase at all because if you've survived the monster phase on the 10th round, then you've won the game. You don't really need to take any action. So like I said, the game is going to go through 10 rounds. Your goal is to survive all 10. Whether or not you can defeat these homunculus or not, you're going to have more coming every round. It doesn't matter if you clear the board. You literally have to just keep surviving until round 10. So if you like a good sci-fi tabletop co-op game, especially if you like tower defense games or games like Castle Panic, but you want something maybe a little meatier with a little more going on, definitely check out Horizon First Contact. This is a crowdfunding game, so you'll be able to check it out on crowdfunding. You can follow the links down below. And please let me know in your comments what you think about this game. We love to show these games so you can get a good idea of whether or not this game is for you or not. And I'd love to know what you like or don't like about this game, keeping in mind, of course, that this is just a complete prototype. On the page, you can see what all the final miniatures and other components are going to look like. But of course, thank you so much for watching. Please continue to like, subscribe, and follow us here at MVM. And until I see you again, keep having fun at the table. Congratulations, you got to the end of one of our videos. Now, if you want more practice, just click on the video over here. It's another video. You might not have seen it yet, so click on it. If you don't want to do that, at least click on the subscription button below. That always helps us. And if you want notifications, please ring that bell.